I'm here with Roger from Ioptron, and we are looking at a new product here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, Dave, this is our new IAFS inline focuser. What's unique about it is what's called iLock technology. It's the first focuser that literally when you stop the motion, it won't slide, and it really isn't concerned with how heavy your imaging trail is. We rated it at 12 pounds, but it, due to the design, to the lead screw design of the, the movement, it locks wherever it stops. Other unique properties about it is it has com computer control, obviously. Then you have manual con manual button controls. Then if you don't have power, it's also the only inline focuser that's electronic that you have a manual focus override. So you have manual focus, you have computer control focus, and you have the button controls. That's really nice um, for, you can kind of still use it for visual purposes without Correct. having to access some sort of an app or a controller. You can just press the buttons here while you're looking through the eyepiece. It's very natural, exactly. very much like you would traditionally use for visual, but it's capable of the needs for an astrophotographer overall with the auto exactly. focusing. And, and the other key is you, you don't have to worry about what temperature variance uh, is that the is that this train slipping. It stays in the position where you stop the focus. Very good. It's very very fine movement to its four mi micrometer movement. So it's very precise on how on each, on each increment of movement. And um, with a setup like this, how do we determine like if our scope is compatible to do this? Okay. So we have a bunch of different options here in terms yeah, the, of sizes. The, the IFS2 is going to be the two inch version of the IFS focusing system. Then there's the IF, AFS3, which is the three inch version for larger instruments. And then we're also going to have a four inch version for very large instruments. So it'll, there'll be a choice for any, any size telescope, any size instrument that you're using for an IFS focus. And I see here, and this, these this are one says Celestron. Exactly. Uh, this adapter one rigs. is the M90. Yeah, uh, the ASCAR scope, so these are the adapters. This is the, okay. where the adapter goes, so you, you purchase the adapter for whichever mount you have and it just attaches here. Very the adapters nice. run about $30 a piece. Great, so if you have a multiple different scopes, you can quickly adapt from one you, to the other. You can switch the IFS from, from seconds. Scope, scope. A little bit more, like, there, there are a couple screws to change, okay. but you just okay. pop it off and there's no, nothing to align, right, just yeah, put it back you have on. The, those locking screws would be important, I think. Exactly. Yes. The, when you purchase the scope, it comes with the folks, it comes with a uh, two inch visual back. It doesn't come with a front adapter. We're gonna offer a number of adapters which are in development to fit various telescopes. Right now we have adapters for all our Ioptron RC scopes and we also have for GSO RC scopes, for GSO Castrogen scopes. We have a number of adapters for ASCAR refractors. We have adapters for Celestron and Mead instruments. Okay. So, we're in the process of developing. There are companies out there too that can build custom adapters. So we can pretty much adapt our focus to, to every model telescope Very good. out there. Very good. Uh, what, in terms of the slippage and the, the, I believe you said something about temperature, are there any other advantages in this kind of design um, as, compo as opposed to like more of the traditional style focuser? Well, it has a built-in sensor, temperature sensor as well. So you can have your software control for temperature difference. But the main purpose is, as we all know, you, you don't have sometimes you turn a lock. Sometimes the, everything the gears move a little bit when you're done focusing. Mm -hmm. This won't do that. Where when the focus motion is stopped, whether it be from the computer, from the button, or from the wheel, that's where it locks. So you and don't have, and like move. you said, there's nothing to have to lock down. That's why we key. call it eye lock. Because a lot of times you get some shift involved with no. that when you have to lock down and then you're out of focus the again. Movement stops. There's no pressure. There's no pressure anywhere on the so cylinder. It's not going to cause you to be off axis or it's, something it's like that. It's designed that it's on, it's on the it's on the worm gear and it just doesn't move. Very interesting design. Um, so you also have some new products uh, with respect to mounts. Do we want to take a look at those? Yes, we can take a look at a few new mounts. This is one of our new um, streamwave gear mounts, the HA sixteen eighteen C. It's extremely compact streamer gear mount. It weighs about five pounds, yet it can carry 18 pounds. Um, very portable. It's, a, it's used as an equatorial or an alt azimuth mount. So, so that can use it for equatorial for imaging. Alt as is much for, more is there normal. A reach out, quick setup. Uh, you're doing Visual. solar, you don't want to do a polar alignment. So it's a very versatile mount. But the, the unique thing is it's so compact. I mean, you can literally. This is your whole observation gear. Comes with a steel tripod. The, the tripod's an accessory, okay. but it's a, it's a relatively inexpensive accessory. And, and in terms of this, uh, the Ioptron controller yeah, the, here? The HAC doesn't come with a controller. It's fully controlled from tablet, from a phone. 
but you can buy an optional head controller. Okay, and in terms of like polar alignment, uh, I assume that's do you do that with some polar sort of alignment, software? Or? There are so many variations of how people polar align today. We sell an iPolar, which is a device that goes on the front. It's a computerized um, a polar alignment device. But people who are into imaging, uh, all the various the, the, the imaging box companies all have They're their polar methods. The yep. There's just many different ways people polar This gives you the today. flexibility to do it any way the, you choose. The, the day of, the day of um, getting behind looking through a polar scope through the mount is, is the days of the past. I, I don't miss it. Not, not for <laughs> Most one people, second. <laughs> old, older people like me don't miss it. No, I, I prefer to stay on my uh, two feet. I agree. So. All right, well, I, I know you have some other mounts um, that we'd like to look at. They're a little a larger. Look. Let's go take a look at our flagship mount, the HAZ-130. Let's do it. What are we looking at here? This is our new flagship mount, it's HAZ-130. It's basically for large instruments. It is, it is a strain wave gear mount, the declination in the right ascension. It looks different than most strain wave mounts because it's purpose. Strain wave mounts have a concept and the idea of being compact, small, lightweight. This obviously doesn't fall into that mold. Right. It can't. It's this is designed to support a lot of weight. It's made the we're gonna be coming out with a 20 inch RC scope. It's wow. made to handle that 20 inch RC. It's also designed to handle multiple inches. We make an accessory bar. We will be able to put combinations of scopes and combinations of imaging devices. So you can have different filter packages going, different instrument types, all in all imaging at the same time right. of the same subject. It, um, it also has other features in that it's, it's, it's designed for tracking satellites, it's designed to track space junk. Matter of fact, one of the reasons it was developed is for some customers that requested, um, some space agency customers that requested something where they could, executives could view their, view the objects they had in orbit go by. And this, this is one of the solutions we came up with. And I would imagine because it's strain wave that it's very uh, it's responsive. Very, it's very responsive, it's very quiet. Um, it's it's quick because it can, it is designed right. for tracking. You can track the ISS, is no problem. Most any object can be tracked. You is, comets. Is this the first time that IOPTRON has gotten into more of the advanced side of like more? Well, I would say our products are advanced in general. But yeah, this is more of a like more of a, a research it, or or it, that grade. It, it is a research grade product. It does reach out in the commercial. Um, space exploration a bit further than we normally do. Right. Um, yeah, and, and, and especially it, with an RC coming out, it seems like there's and, and a. And it still good will balance. be a consumer product too. It's not outrageously priced, and uh, it, it is within the reach of most consumers. Now, it, it looks like there's not a whole lot to it because it's a strain wave mount. Exactly. So would this be mounted on a wedge? Um, how? What, it, what am I exactly looking at? It can at? actually be floor mounted if you want. We, we assume it's going to be permanent mounts, so if people will build the pedestal or a pier, it'll be mounted permanently on, on a, something like that. But it is designed that it can work off of its feet and be a, be a portable type mount. Very cool. It's also easy setup. It uses our level of go technology, so you turn it on, it locates where it is, it goes to whatever object you want automatically. Now, now in a setup like this, um, uh, you had mentioned a bunch of different filters, different things all going at once. Um, are there, is there the ability to adjust the, how these are angled so that we can basically combine the image uh, frame? Yeah, you, you, um, can, you can manipulate each saddle, uh, but it has to stay within the range so that the, 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 the the instruments could travel within the fork arms, so that's the limiter. Right. Um, but I'm saying like this scope and this scope, all of them looking at the same spot in the sky. Uh, are you able to like, adjust it, it, for it that? Would, it would take it would take some work, but yes, people could could manipulate each each base to point slightly different angles to converge on the same same object. This is more for a survey setup, I think, right now than it, the it's side kinda, by side. It's, kinda, it's an open-ended platform. It's designed to, for people to be creative and. No, okay, it can carry this large amount of weight, so what do I want to put on sure. this? What do I want to do with it? And we expect people to customize it for various right, it uses. It looks like, especially with the space you have here, the, the but sky it gives, is it the gives limit. The pointing it's not the tracking limit here. Device, yeah. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Um, amazing to see the products at IOPTRON really you know, taking advantage of this new technology, the strain wave technology. Um, you guys were in it really early, I think. Yeah, our, de our designers really, we, we recognized the portability factor of strain wave gear was, was going to have a huge impact, and it did on the industry. And our designers embraced it very early, and we pioneered a lot of technologies. We have 
you know, some of the largest strain wave gear. This is probably the largest strain wave mount commercially available. Even like our HAE 69, it's, it's a relatively small mount that can carry a 70 pound instrument. Wow. And it's hard. It's hard to beat because it's just so and easy. You've got to the move maturity around. of having done this now for many years and the experience to be able to put exactly. out a product. Exactly, we have you all the background on. of all the other type. We're not new to making mounts. We have a lot of experience of making mounts, and we've been able to apply those those lessons learned from traditional mounts into strain wave gear mounts. And it's awesome. I, I think we're we're doing quite well in this industry for that type of mount. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your time. It's great to have a Ioptron here at Neve 2025. Uh, it's always a pleasure and uh, thanks for watching. If you're still watching and like videos like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Memberships start as low as $3 per month with benefits including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us bring the universe even closer than you think.